Right, let's get more on the commodities markets. We can get over to Sydney. We're joined there by Jonathan Barrett. Uh, Jonathan is Managing Director at Commodity Broking Services. Uh, Jonathan, thanks for joining us. Right, first of all, let's start off with oil. What no are the problem. key elements at the moment behind the machinations and movement in the oil price, or should I say the gold price? Yeah, well, I guess when we look at the oil price, we can see that the market's certainly concerned about confidence, economic confidence in the world and demand from there. But on the other side, they're looking at OPEC and also the, the potential for more cuts from OPEC uh, further down the track if the price of oil remains low. I think one of the interesting things that we have seen is that oil has had this ability to have a good bounce, even in the wake of larger than expected data we had last night. So when I look at that, it actually feels to me as if the price of oil can actually continue to track higher. Right. Why, why so? I mean, you know, we've got at the moment General Gaddafi, or sorry, Mama Gaddafi saying, oh, sorry, he's not a general, he's a colonel, so I do beg your pardon, but uh, he, he's <laughs> saying oil prices are unbearable right now. And this is the danger, isn't it? So many countries have based their budgets on oil at 100 bucks a, dollar, uh, bucks a barrel plus. <clears throat> Well, I guess this is, the, this is the, the big thing because so many countries have based a lot of their economics on a higher oil price. So really, they've really got, they haven't got a lot of options open to them to explore to get oil prices higher other than actually cutting production. And when you look at what's happening in the changing pace of OPEC, when you look at what's happening in Russia at the moment, these countries are sort of starting to bleed uh, as this uh, financial contagion just continues to expand. So there's really not a lot of options open to them other than to cut production. And by cutting production, then they'll see the price up and hopefully earn uh, some more of those dollars and try and get their economies back online. OK, well, you know... Would this be an entry point if you're a speculator then? If I was a speculator, I'd certainly have a look at oil at these levels. Um, it certainly wouldn't be. It, it, for the long term, yes, we're actually looking for our, our, our overlay models are at the moment for our hedges. We're actually suggesting to them that they must start to do some hedging now for the next 12 months. So from a speculative point of view, yes, you can have a go at From a hedges point of view, we'd strongly suggest that they start to move into the market. Jonathan, I want to move to gold, though originally did start with it. Uh, looking at gold, it's uh, looking like it's going to be a huge topic this year, according to your research. Why? Yep. Look, I think gold's quite interesting, uh, I guess mainly because it was uh, a very good performing metal last year. There's more interest in terms of the ETFs. Um, when we've seen the latest numbers, particularly from the SPDR, where their gold investment's higher. And I think while we've got continued concern out there uh, on the economic front, when we've got continued um, more investment needs required, we're still unsure whether we're deflation, inflation scenarios starting to pick up. We're just seeing a general float. I think one of the interesting points at the moment is that the US dollar has been exceptionally strong against a lot of the other currencies. But against gold, gold has been relatively steady. In fact, gold's been tracking higher. So on the back of that, we actually feel that gold will remain a very good performer through 2009. And still at these levels, we think that it's still a recommended buy. Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us. Jonathan Barrett there. He's from Commodity Broking Service. He's going to just tell you that gold is trading still at $156.13 the ounce.